In this tutorial, I'll explain about epicycloid and hypocycloid. So, observe this animation to understand how the epicycloid is generated. So, epicycloid is generated when a circle is rolling around another circle as shown here. Assume that this is the rolling circle or generating circle. This particular arc is representing the directing circle. So, this particular circle will roll, this point will trace this curve which is the epicycloid. Observe this animation carefully. Now observe this, the starting point, now it is generating this epicycloid. Now observe the direction of rolling. Now direction of rolling is clockwise. Hence, on this particular circle, we will give the numbering in the counterclockwise direction. Observe it. It's rolling in the clockwise direction. So that's why from the starting point, you have given the numbering in the counterclockwise direction. That is the reverse direction. So in this way, epicycloid is generated. Now I will explain how to draw this. Before drawing the epicycloid, observe this small concept. Here to find out the arc length of the directing circle, we have to use a popular formula that is L equal to R theta. So when a circle is rolling on this particular directing circle, the length of this arc is equal to circumference of the rolling circle. So, assume that R is the radius of the rolling circle, then the circumference will become 2 pi R. That is nothing but this arc length. That is L here. That means L value is 2 pi R. The radius of the directing circle is capital R. So, now our aim is to find theta. So, that is why I will just rearrange this equation L equal to R theta because I want theta that is why theta equal to L by R. L value is nothing but 2 pi R. Substitute that 2 pi R here. Then theta equal to 2 pi R by capital R. So, this 2 pi value is 360 degrees. So, that is the theta equal to 360 into small r by capital R. So, using this relation, you have to find the improved angle theta here. Okay. Now, we will start drawing the problem. So, draw a vertical line. This line length is nothing but the radius of the directing circle. So, that is capital R. So, in this problem, assume capital R is 60 mm. At this end, you extend up to the diameter of the rolling circle. Rolling circle diameter. Now, it is 40 mm. That means radius is 20. That means small r is 20. Capital R is 60. Okay. Locate the center here. Now take this as center up to here. 20 as radius. Draw a circle. Now divide the circle into 8 parts as shown here. Now on this circle, you give the numbering in the counterclockwise direction. As already have observed, as it is rolling in the clockwise direction, you give the numbering in the counterclockwise direction. And one more important observation is this particular epicycloid you can draw in any orientation. So that may be in the bit, starting with vertical position, that may be with the inclined position. Whatever may be the position, you will get the curve, curve won't change. Okay, that's why. So the easiest method is starting with the vertical position. Okay. It is easy to divide the circle into 8 equal parts if you start like this. If you take this in the inclined position, it is somewhat difficult. Okay. Now, you have to find theta. Theta equal to 360 into the small r 20 by capital R 60. If you calculate the theta value, the theta value you have to mark here to find the other end of the arc. So, theta equal to 120 degrees. Mark 120 degrees here. This will be the other end. Okay. 
this circuit is divided into eight parts. So that's why you have to divide this arc also into eight parts. How to divide the arc into eight parts? The easiest method is this arc included angle is 120. You divide this 120 angle into eight parts. Okay. So now, now you observe 120 by 8, 15. Each time you take 15 15 angle, it won't be accurate. When you come to when you reach to the last division, definitely you will get error. Because to avoid that, first divide this into two equal parts by, by marking 60 degrees angle. After that, mark 30 degrees angle and mark 30 degrees angle. That means 60 by 2. Like this, like this. Then mark 15 degrees here, then 15 here, 15 here, something like this. 15 you mark here, you take this particular distance with compass and you mark that here. Then you, with the same distance you mark that here. With compass you can do this. In this way if you divide this arc into 8 equal parts, there are very less chances to get the error. Okay. Okay. After dividing this into 8 parts, now draw the locus of this, these points 4, 5, 3, locus of centers, etc. Okay. Now I am drawing the locus of center is something like this. Now draw a line joining row 1 and extend this. This line will intersect with this locus of centers. This point will become C1. Similarly, this will become C2. This is C3. This is C4. This is C5, C6, C7 and C8. Now draw the locus of 5, 3. 6, 2 and 7, 1. In the case of cycloid, this locus of centers and locus of 6 and 2 will remain same. But in the case of epicycloid, these two are not same. You will get different locus for 6 and 2 and locus of centers. That is one important observation here. Okay, next. The next step is take C1 as center. Take C1 as center. Radius of the rolling circle, that means this radius 20 as radius, draw an arc onto locus of 1 only. I want to get P1. So that's why draw the arc onto locus of 1. This is the locus of 1. This will be the starting point. This will be my next point. Here I will get P1. So that is nothing but locus of 1 here. Okay. This particular radius is 20 only. This particular radius is 20 only. This point is P1. Next, take C2 as center, take C2 as center, then with same radius 20, draw an arc onto locus of 2, this is the locus of 2, 2 is here, this is the locus of 2, this particular arc, draw the arc onto that. This radius is same 20 only, this point is P2. Next, repeat the same procedure, take C3 as center, with same radius, draw the arc onto locus of 3. Somewhere here you will get it. This point is P3. This line is actually not required. This is only for your information purpose. I am showing. With this line you can understand that radius remains constant from center to here. Okay. Next, take C4 as center. The same radius 20. Draw an arc on log of 4. That will come exactly somewhere here. That is P4. Next, C5 as center. Same radius 20, draw an arc onto log of 5, that will come somewhere here. This is P5. At C6 as center, draw an arc onto log of 6, that is this arc. Somewhere here you will get it. So this is P6. Now take C7 as center, draw the arc onto log of 7, means somewhere here you will get it. This is center, up to here radius, this is P7. Now take C8 as center. And 20 years later, if you draw an arc, that will come exactly somewhere here. That is P8. Now draw a smooth curve. Draw a smooth curve joining all these points. Draw a smooth free hand curve. Okay. Now how to draw the tangent and normal? So for drawing tangent and normal, they will give some distance from the pole. Somewhere here. From O, they will give some distance. From 70 mm, 80 mm, etc. So, with that distance, you have to draw the arc onto this curve. 
for the time being, assume that at this point, I want to draw the tangent to normal. Something like this, some point, you will get on the curve. So at that particular point, they will ask for tangent to normal. Then what you do is, from the given point, radius of the rolling circle has radius, given point is center, draw an arc on the locus of center. This is the center, with only radius I am drawing the arc. Okay, that will intersect the box of center somewhere here. This radius is 20. Now you join this point to the pole. Like this. Point to O. Now this line will intersect the directing line, this blue color line somewhere here. This point you call as M. Now draw a line joining P and M. That will become the normal. Now M N is the normal. If you draw a perpendicular to this normal, that will become the tangent. So in this way, you have to draw the epicycloid and tangent and normal to the epicycloid. Hypocycloid is generated when a circle is rolling inside of another circle. So, this is the directing circle. Inside of this circle, this rolling circle is rolling. So, now if you observe the animation, you can understand one interesting point. Here, this will roll in the anti-clockwise direction, that's why we will give the numbering on the circle in the clockwise direction, you can observe it. Now observe, this is rolling in the anti-clockwise direction, that's why numbering is done in the clockwise direction. It is rolling inside of this, you can notice this, this point is tracing the curve, hypocycloid. Observe how this point is tracing the curve. Okay. Here also you have to use the same formula, theta equal to 360 into small by capital R to find out this include angle theta. Okay. Now how to draw this, I will explain how to draw this. So this line is representing the radius of the directing circle that is 60. Now at this end, from this end, you take some distance inside of it, that is the radius of the rolling circle. Take this as center up to here as radius by circle. Now, so when it is 20 and 60, we know the angle. Divide this, in, this circle into 8 parts and give the numbering in the clockwise direction because as it is rolling in the counterclockwise direction, you will give the numbering in the clockwise direction. Okay, draw the arc. This angle is 120 degrees. Now, divide, the now divide this into 8 parts. How to divide this into 8 parts? Already I have explained. Now draw the locus of centers, this is the locus of center, then you will get C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, C8 points, then draw the locus of 7 and 1, locus of 6 and 2, locus of 5 and 3 and locus of 4. Okay. Next the procedure is just similar to the epicycloid and cycloid. Now take C1 as center, C1 as center. It's this radius of the rolling circle as radius, draw an arc on the locus of 1, that means on to this particular arc you have to draw an arc, that will be something like this, this is the 20 radius, this point will become P1. Now when you put the compass here, you can draw the arc somewhere here and somewhere here also, but do not draw the arc on to your right hand side, draw the arc on to your left hand side because this is the starting point. The next nearer point on this particular locus is this. If you draw the arc on this side, that is the forever point. It can't suddenly move up to here. It will move slowly to this position only. So this is the correct position. Okay? Do not do that mistake. Drawing arc on to this side is not correct. Okay? Next. Take C2 as center. Then with same 20 radius, draw the arc on the locus of 2, that will be somewhere here, that is P2. Repeat the same procedure with C3, this is the center, with the same 20 radius, draw the arc on the locus of 3, here you will get P3. C4 as center, draw the arc on the locus of 4, this locus somewhere here you will get that, that is P4. Now C5 as center, and with same 20 radius, draw the arc on the locus of 4, 5, this is the locus of 5, this arc somewhere here you will get this, this is the P5 point. 
Now take C6 as center, then with 20 radius, draw the arc until radius of 6 means this, this particular arc. So get this somewhere here. This is P6. Let's take C7 as center, draw the arc onto this particular radius. This is P7. Here you will get P8. Okay. Now join all these points with a smooth freehand curve as shown here. This is the hypocycloid. Now how to draw the tangent and normal to the hypocycloid at a given point? Assume some point somewhere here. Okay. Now from this point you draw an arc onto locus of center with 20 radius. That is the radius of this particular rolling circle. Okay. This is the 20 radius. Somewhere here I am getting this point. Now you join this point to the pole like this. Join this point to the pole and extend it until it touches the directing circle. Okay. This particular point we are calling as M. Now draw a line joining M and P. That will become the normal. Perpendicular to this M and if you draw that will become the tangent. 